I've been keeping a little secret and I can finally let it out. I've been testing the all new Chidi Plus 4 for a couple of months now and spoiler alert, this may be the best price to performance printer on the market right now. So let's take a look at what makes this printer so good by looking at what makes this printer so different. And we'll also test some real heavy duty parts from materials that other printers just can't handle. I'm gonna even show you a couple Easter eggs I discovered about this printer while making this video. So stick around. You may have seen my video on the Chidi Q1 Pro and that has to be one of the most affordable enclosed Core XY printers and it is one of my top two printers right now. Well, maybe top three printers, I guess. And that's because of the print quality and the versatility. I think they've accomplished this by focusing on what's most important, like the structure, the extrusion path, and the bed leveling. And I think they've taken the exact same approach to this printer, the Chidi Plus 4. They've just taken it even further. It's even more beefy, it can reach even higher chamber temperatures, and it can also reach higher nozzle temperatures, which is now getting into the range of printing high-performance engineering plastics like PPS filament. So allow me to take you for a tour around the printer first, and then we'll print those functional parts to see how they look, and I'll also show you what I've been printing on this machine for a while now. At first glance, this printer looks like it's made from metal, but the shell is actually plastic. It's probably ABS. That's a good way to keep the cost down, and it still looks really good. This time, rather than a polycarbonate top, they went with a tempered glass top, so it's nice and flat, and it's also sturdy. So if you have a filament dryer you want to use, you can probably put it up there while the print is going. It's also handy if you have more than one build plate, you can take the finished part out and let it sit right on the top and cool. The Q1 Pro had a polycarbonate door, but this printer has a tinted tempered glass door and the hinges have a good amount of friction to prevent the door from swinging open too quickly. They listened to our feedback about the Q1 and mounted the on and off switch on the side rather than on the back and it's super easy to reach now from the front. There is no more reaching around and trying to find it. The spool holder is now extra sturdy and mounts above the printer. And I like the solution because it is easy to access. It also keeps the footprint as small as possible. And you can see at a glance how much filament you have left from anywhere in the room. All of the glass that meets up against the cabinet is sealed with a gasket material as well. This printer has quite a bit more print volume than the Q1 and the X1C as well. It can print 305 by 305 by 280 millimeters. And also because this printer is bigger and heavier duty, it also weighs more. So you have these added handles that extend out so you can move it around more easily. The powder coated black steel frame is quite a bit deeper than anything I've seen out there. My Bamboo X1C is about 26 or 28 millimeters deep and that's 1.4 millimeters thick. And the steel in this printer for the frame is 50 millimeters by 25 millimeters and it's 1.5 millimeters thick. All the connections between the rods, the Z screws and the frame are made from glass reinforced nylon and they are extra beefy. The same goes for all the parts in the gantry and the head. Everything is big and super stiff. It's made to last and it's able to handle the temperatures inside that heated chamber. All of the rods in this printer are 10 millimeters. That goes for the X and the Y axis and also the Z axis. And that also goes for the two Z screws. They are 10 millimeters rather than the typical eight millimeters. And because of that, I created a brand new rod sloth to suit the 10 millimeter double start thread. And that will make keeping those Z screws clean. And you can find a link to that below. The bed on this printer is six millimeters thick, which means it's gonna stay much flatter over the larger distance. It will take longer to heat up on the other hand, but as you may have seen from some of my previous videos, to get the thinner beds to stop warping, we needed to let them soak. So in this case, there's no need to let the bed soak, but it does still take a little bit longer for the initial heating. The maximum temperature for this bed is 120 degrees Celsius. So again, it can go beyond what most other printers can do. I also wanted to check how even the bed heating was and sure enough, the thicker aluminum bed is doing its job and this has a very uniform temperature across the entire bed. We have the filament runout sensor in the head. It also has an automatic filament cutter like the bamboo and up on the back, they've also included the tangle sensor as well. The nozzle wiping for this printer is something like a car wash. It is fully loaded. It has something like the Bamboo A1, which flings the poop out the back. It also has a small section of build plate to make sure that the bottom of the nozzle is clean. And it also has a large wafered piece of high temperature silicone. All of this is great, but the really cool thing is the way that they're using it. They're not just going in and out. The head moves around in all directions to make sure they can keep the nozzle as clean as possible. And so far I haven't had to think about it one time, so it seems to be doing the job. 
This printer is now a pooping printer, so I don't know if Chidi will have their own AMS system coming or if they want to make sure that this printer can handle filament changes from an aftermarket unit, but in either case, it's a good idea to have it built in. The nozzle on this printer can reach 370 degrees Celsius and it's heated by an 80 watt heater. And this heater has some punch to it because this nozzle heats faster than anything I've tested so far, even faster than the FL Sun T1. This printer also has a chamber heater and this one has a larger blower fan and there is no way to get your fingers up and in there even if you tried. The maximum chamber temperature for this printer is 65 degrees Celsius and this time around 65 is a temperature we can actually set. It won't cause a thermal fault because the max value is 70 degrees Celsius. This printer also has a carbon filter back here which is pretty easy to remove if you ever need to replace the carbon filter bag. And yeah, you can just reinstall it like that. So how about that first Easter egg? Well, these are not your typical belts. These are much finer than a regular belt and they're also much wider than a regular belt that you'd find on maybe a Creality or a bamboo printer. So how about that Easter egg number two? Well, this printer has insulation on the inside. This is gonna help with both sound and also for heat retention. It's not completely insulated on the inside, but both of the sides are. Now, I didn't actually realize this at first. I was trying to find out what the panels were made from. And when I touched them, they felt pretty soft. And sure enough, the inside on the left and right panels has some insulation on it. I think this is a really good idea for any printer with a chamber, especially a heated chamber. But it also helps for sound as long as the door is closed and the top is on. I printed a lot of parts on this printer already using ABS glass fiber for our 3D printer Duck Showdown, which is starting next week but ABS is still pretty low temperature material compared to some of the other engineering plastics. So I wanted to kick it up a notch by printing some PPS carbon fiber. This filament is not only resistant to far higher temperatures, but it is also flame retardant and it also has a high chemical resistance. It prints with a nozzle temperature in the range of 300 to 370 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna try it at 350 and I'll heat the chamber to 55 as well. First up, I have this heater cover that I wanted to reprint and I designed and printed this originally for the Q1 Pro from Polycarbonate, which is a pretty high temperature material, but unfortunately it was no match for the heater and it looks like a scene from the movie Alien. So I wanted to reprint it to see if it could take the heat this time. I've designed these outdoor post caps with integrated LED lights and these will be eventually painted, but I wanted something that can handle the heat of an LED light that's gonna be running for hours and the heat of sun that can beat down on it and they need to be able to take some abuse and also deal with a big swing in temperatures. I'm gonna probably use ABS for the final product, but I wanted to give the PPS carbon fiber another go on this printer. And these are meant to be wired using outdoor LED lights through a cavity that I make in the post. And I'm also gonna make a matching set of recessed lights to shine down on the steps and on the deck of the porch that I'm building. So I did all the torture testing and I did the benches. And for this sample here, when I printed on the bamboo and the Creality, I would have VFAs, very fine artifacts in this area. And for this sample printed on the Chidi plus four, there is no sign of that. Now I do need to do a little bit more filament calibration. All I did was the first flow control and one pressure advanced but overall a pretty good result and I was able to remove all of these plugs which I've never been able to do before which is a pretty good sign. I chose to use brown matte PLA because it likes to show the defects better than anything else. Overall pretty good results and of course I printed the new versions of the rod sloths and these turned out really nice there's not a layer line in sight the only issue I ran into with these is that they're a little bit less flexible than I was expecting, which means it's a bit tougher to get them on to the rods, but not really a big problem. They do go on. And one thing I discovered about this material is that it is both rigid, but it has the ability to flex without breaking. So pretty cool material to work with. So here's that post cap from the PPS carbon fiber. I've already inserted this little spline here to lock everything into place. And I was going to put this little piece of PET-G in there to simulate what the light would look like, except for I printed this on the bamboo. It didn't turn out that great, but also it shrunk a little bit too much. So it doesn't really fit. 
So forgive me, but I'll skip to the next part. So this has, again, that little spline, a little tenon that goes in there. Let's see if I can get it lined up. There we go. Perfect fit, absolutely perfect. This material does stay extremely flat and you probably noticed that when I was trying to get the build plate off, it was stuck down there because it was both stuck to the build plate and the part was still very flat. So it didn't separate from the build plate at all. And the last part here, eventually this would all be glued together. So that is the final product minus the little light bar that goes in between there and the LED light wraps around the outside of this with the fillets on it and the wire can feed through either here or can feed through here down to the post and then down to the base of the porch. That turned out really good. Of course, this will get a coat of paint in the end and I'm not sure if I need to sand it at all or if this texture is actually going to look really good with the paint on it. That's pretty close to flawless printing. So these are all of the prints for the upcoming duck challenge video. And the only issue that I ran into with these is the fact that some of them lack support. They had very horizontal surfaces and some of them didn't completely close in. So this one, for example, has no support below that area. Of course, there's a large hollow and the walls are extremely thin. The tops and bottoms are extremely thin on these. So there's not a lot of material there to begin with. And of course there is no support. So aside from that, they all looked really good. So there were a couple that were similar to that, but other than that issue, they all turned out great. And you will see these in the upcoming video. Aside from a little bit of finer filament calibration that I still need to do, the print quality seems to be quite good. I haven't noticed any signs of VFAs yet on this printer. I'm assuming the unique belts play a big part in that. The build volume would be nice to have it as 305 cubed, but I can't really say that I ever use anything close to that height for my prints, so it doesn't really affect me. I still like to see some sort of automatic calibration of the filament, just like we have on the Bamboo Lab X1C. I know it's not a necessity, but it's just a nice thing to have to save some time initially. One of the two steel magnetic plates from the glass door wasn't connected when I received the printer, but I was able to use a little bit of JB Weld for a permanent connection. I reported that back to Chidi a couple months ago, so hopefully they can prevent it from happening again. And the only other thing that I ran into was that the first three times I used the heater, it was off gassing quite a bit. So I'd recommend running it with the doors and the windows open a couple of times first. I don't smell it anymore and I've been printing with the heater on for just about every single print that I've made. For most of the time I've been printing, I've been using Chidi Studio, which is almost identical to Orca Slicer. Chidi has adapted it to their printers to produce a little bit better results right out of the box. And they also have an app to go along with it. And unlike most printers, they also have an ethernet port, which is nice if you're working on prints that are top secret or if you're just ultra paranoid. I've had good results with both Chidi Studio and with Orca Slicer. And of course we have immediate access to the printer through Fluid right out of the box too. Chidi has been creating printers that can do anything that the other ones can do, but they're taking it way beyond that. To me, it seems like Chidi is pushing hard to be one of the best 3D printer companies out there, and I think their competition should be keeping a close eye on them. As for the price, they've told me that they're releasing this printer at $799 US, which is less than the Bamboo X1C without the AMS. And looking at the beefy parts, the thicker and deeper steel frame, the much higher nozzle temperature, the thicker bed, and auto bed leveling with two independent motors, and a heated build chamber, it is definitely one of, if not the best cost to value printers on the market right now. Sometimes Chidi has early bird specials for their new releases, so if they do, check the description below, and if there are any coupon codes, I will add them there as well, so hopefully I can save you some money. If you thought this video was helpful, consider subscribing and help this channel to grow, and as always, if you want to help support the channel and you're in the market for a printer or other tools that actually perform, I have a very short list of products that I've tested and that I can say they are good and that they actually last. Hint, hint, this printer is in that list now. Thank you to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making all of these types of videos possible. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and we will see you on the next one.